Hey folks, it's your main man Ian. I'm here with some of my dogs, my foster dog there, some puppies here that are in training, some of the dogs that I have trained. And I wanted to do a video to talk about like how to or what to expect after a boarding train. Now, oftentimes the dogs come to us from anywhere from three to six weeks. And, you know, depending on how much time they spend here, um, there's going to be uh, homework or there's going to be reinforcement that the owner is going to have to do afterwards if they want to maintain the success that we've had here. Now, if a dog comes here for, you know, like 10 weeks, obviously there's going to be less reinforcement that the owner is going to need to do because there's dogs been here for two and a half months. Um, if the dog is here for just like, you know, three weeks and they've been doing behaviors for a really long time, well, yeah, the owner is going to have to do a tremendous amount of work even when the dog gets back to be certain that the dog does not go back to how they were before. So I wanted to do this video and talk about like, what are the things that we would expect somebody to do or we would hope somebody would do after a boarding train that will lead to their dog maintaining the success. And keep in mind, this amount of work that I'm talking about is directly related to the severity of the problem your dog has, how long they have been doing this behavior with you as the handler, and then also, you know, the household, how structured is your household? How many people are there? How much stuff is going on? Do you have multiple dogs and multiple handlers who all have different ideas of what it means to own a dog? Or is it just like you and the dog? And that's, that's it, okay? And then thirdly, like, it's gonna de depend on how much time the dog spent here. You know, if the dog spends three weeks here and then comes two days a week for two or three months later, yeah, you're not gonna have to follow up as much. Um, if the dog comes here for just three weeks, or two weeks and the dog's been, you know, doing things for a long time, yeah, we're still gonna be able to get a good foundation, but wow, you're gonna potentially have a lot of work to do when the dog comes back if you wanna maintain that level of success. And so some of the things I think to think about is first of all, just house rules and structure. You know, living in a household where this is normal, where this is normal, where this is normal, where what's normal is a dog hanging out and relaxing. And that is the default in the household at all times. The dog's calm, the dog's relaxed, the dog is chilling. And, you know, this may be emotionally challenging for us because we may feel like, oh my God, the dog's depressed. And every time I come home, I just want to get the dog all riled up because it makes me happy. You know, well, we, we may not be able to do that <laughs> if we want the dog to stop barking at the mailman and digging up the yard and doing all that stuff. So we need to understand training starts in the household um, with a foundation of calmness and like kind of creating a zen-like environment around yourself and in the household where the dog is just learning to be calm, you're learning to be calm around the dog, and you're all understanding that that is really how it should be. Most of the time, the dogs are just calm. Now, whether that's reinforcing this by having the dog in the crate a lot, whether this is reinforcing it by having them tied in their back tie and their placemat, maybe they're outside, maybe they're on a dog run, maybe um, you just work a lot on you know, doorways and having them come into the house calmly and go out of the house calmly and, you know, whatever it is, you're going to have to be consistent for a period of time until the dog uh, becomes, you know, able to just relax on their own. And before we're able to understand, like, there's nothing wrong with the dog. The dog is relaxed. The dog is chilling. The dog is actually very calm. You know, the dog is like super calm right there. I wish I could be that dog that just relaxes and chills. But I got a lot of stuff to do. I got to work. So that's one thing to think about is just that structure in the household and reinforcing that. And we're happy to give you handouts talking about structure. We have a lot of YouTube videos that will talk about structure. And every time when you come here and you watch the dog in the videos, you know, that's what you're going to see. And if you continue to watch our content after you take the dog home, you're going to continue to see messages of structure in the household, structure in the yard, structure in the car. And what does that mean? And what do we, all the different ways that we operate to get the dog to be like this, okay? Um, the second thing to think about is like rewards, okay? If it's toys, if it's affection, if it's food, um, maybe if it's just car rides and walks, like we cannot keep giving the dog the reward for bad behavior. We can't, the dog will then do the bad behavior. So when the dog comes back from a boarding train, you know, you're gonna have to, have all the toys put away. You're gonna have to have the food maybe uh, put away so there's not just huge bowls of food laying around all the time. And then you're gonna really start keeping track of, hey, you know, did I, the dog did something that I asked them, you know, did I give them a reward? And if I'm offering them, you know, their kibble and they're spitting it out, hey, maybe I'm giving my dogs too much food. And if I'm offering them a toy as a reward and they don't want the toy, hey, maybe I'm giving my dog too many toys. 
And so, you know, when they come back, you're really gonna have to think about like, hey, how do I create rewards that are valuable? I want the dog to pay attention to me on a walk. Well, like if I don't bring food or toys or something on the walk, you know, that the dog wants, like, well, why are they gonna pay attention to me on the walk? And so I might have to, you know, stop overfeeding my dog. I might have to have the food or toys put away so that when I pull the toys out or pull the food out, the dog knows, hey man, now's the time to take a reward. Now's the time to do the right thing. Oftentimes dogs that come here, you know, mostly it's for being spoiled. Like they've just gotten everything and they haven't really been asked to do anything to get the things that they need. And whether that's a huge bowl of food at the end of the day, or that's just a bunch of toys scattered all over the house, or maybe that's just access to their best friend and access to every person in the household. Um, regardless, you know, there's going to have to be a reassessment of that spoiling to go, Hey man, if I'm going to spoil you, like I'm at least going to give you stuff because you've done the right behavior. Okay. Now the third thing to talk about, um, is going to be your fulfillment of your dog. Okay. A lot of times dogs come here. The owner has been trying to fulfill the dog through walks. The owner has been trying to fulfill the dog through petting them, giving them a lot of affection. And what we see is the dog is frustrated. That's why they are doing these crazy behaviors. Like a dog that's really fulfilled. I mean, it's like this dog is just super fulfilled. He's really calm all the time. But a dog that's frustrated because they don't get the right um, fulfillment with their body, with their mouth, even socially, it can create frustration. And so, you know, that's something that you're going to have to think about you know, when the dog comes back is like, hey, is walking the dog 30 minutes or an hour a day actually physically tiring out this dog? Or is walking the dog 30 minutes to an hour a day actually allowing the dog to practice ignoring me, practice pulling on the leash, practice getting distracted? And essentially, you know, I'm rewarding them with a walk for doing all the things that I really find quite annoying. And so, you know, we really are going to want to think about, hey, is it time to really maybe spend 15 minutes every day training the dog and working with them on their obedience? Is it maybe time to start playing with them 30 minutes a day with a toy or getting them on a bicycle so I can run them or getting a treadmill so I could, you know, actually have them walk or exercise in a way where they are not practicing bad behaviors. Um, I mean, you could see we have an agility course here and we have treadmills, we have toys. You can see this little rope thing hanging. We tie a tug toy to that. I mean, there's so many ways to fulfill your dogs. Um, and that's something, like I said before, with the structure, like that's something we're happy to talk about. We're happy to provide additional sessions. We have a lot of content online. Talks about that, how to fulfill your dog's need for leadership, how to fulfill your dog's need for physical exercise, for, you know, smelling, searching for things. Um, in some cases, fulfill their need to be protective or fulfill their need to bark and, uh, you know, just enact these parts of themselves that are probably not going to go away um, because that's just kind of who the dog is. So that's something to think about. You know, how am I going to fulfill the dog? Does my dog need two hours of exercise a day or do they really need actually to be calm, you know, 22 hours a day and really get excited for two hours a day? And would they actually be better off that way? You know, am I actually tiring the dog out by letting them run around the house all crazy? Am I actually fulfilling them by letting them just run around the yard like maniacs and bark at everything? Or is this actually creating a very frustrated dog? And when I take them places, they're acting crazy. So that's something to think about. The final thing to think about, which I don't really hear much people talking about enough, is the emotional component, folks. Like there's going to be emotions that come up when the dog comes out of a boarding and training. And we had a client just the other day, the dog's here like that. Like doing what I've worked so hard for two and a half years to, to accomplish with my dog. And the person's gone, man, she look, this dog looks depressed. My dog looks sad. Like my dog is sad, you know, and that's, um, you know, something we have to ask ourselves a lot as trainers, which is like, you know, emotionally, are people aware of their own emotions versus the dog's emotions? And the reality is we don't really know how a dog feels. I mean, I don't know how a dog feels. I've been doing this for a long time. I can guess, but I'll never really know how Emma feels. But time and time again, what we see with dogs that are struggling, hey, typically the type of dog that needs a um, board and train is that there's some element of an unhealthy emotional relationship. Like either the owner can't stand to see the dog struggle, and so they have to constantly give in to the dog's needs. Anytime the dog cries, any dog the time the dog whines, pushes on them, scratches on the door, they go, oh my God, I have to give the dog what they need immediately because I can't emotionally handle the pain of not giving in to my dog's needs right now. Or perhaps what it is, is like, we really like seeing the dog excited. It makes us really happy. 
Maybe we had a dog that was really excited for a period of time and that didn't cause behavioral problems, but now we have a new dog where to have that dog in a very euphoric, excited, happy state all the time is not congruent with having a dog that can go places and be enjoyable to have guests over and um, enjoyable to be around in high distraction environments. Um, or even like enjoyable to just, you know, have out with our other dog and not worry that the other dog's bossing our other dog around. So, um, you know, whether it's struggling to discipline the dog, set boundaries, set consequences, whether it's, you know, emotionally struggling to not keep spoiling the dog, emotionally struggling to stop petting the dog when they're nervous, anxious, fearful. Um, maybe it's even just emotionally, you know, not going to this reflexive, you know, thought pattern of just like, oh my God, this is crazy. I don't know why he does this. Oh my God, this is crazy. And just going into this like emotional state of confusion or uncertainty and instead shift that and go, no, I have a trainer. I am certain here that if I do what the trainer suggests, the dog's behavior will change. And the reason the dog's behavior is not changing is I'm not doing what the trainer is suggesting and that's okay. I might need a different suggestion from the trainer. I might need a different trainer, but you know, there's no mystery. Um, because honestly, dogs are very aware of our emotional states and humans are very emotional. And so, you know, if we're not able to be a little bit objective after the boarding and training and give some time to reinforce what the trainer says and just kind of, you know, I'm not saying don't be emotionally connected to your dog, but just kind of have a little bit of objectivity and just go, well, is the dog really sad? I don't know. Is the dog depressed? Like why do I want a dog that's all excited? I come here to the dog trainer's house. Every dog's really calm. Is the trainer experiencing some existential crisis that he comes home and the dogs don't go crazy? Man, why do I struggle with that? So these are just things to think about, folks. And I wanted to do this video to just talk about, like, some things you might have to think about. Like, are I going to keep spoiling the dog if they come back from the board and train? Am I going to create rules and structure in the household and in the car? Uh, am I going to deeply, you know, reassess my emotional relationship with the dog and be able to have a little bit of objectivity? And I'm not going to lie, folks, you might even need to hire a therapist. You know, if you're really struggling emotionally with the dog training process, like, you might need to hire a therapist and talk to them about, man, why is this so hard for me? I can have no problem disciplining my husband, no problem disciplining my employees, my son. But man, when it comes to my dog, I just really struggle here. And lastly, like I talked about before, folks, thinking about that biological fulfillment. Is my dog actually fulfilled by a walk or the dog park or, you know, just going to restaurants with me? Whatever it is, like, am I actually fulfilling my dog's needs? Um, or do I need to add more structure, more discipline, more training, more, you know, running, more chasing, more tug? Um, so that the dog is actually fulfilled. And that 30 minutes or one hour of time I have to exercise them is going to be enough because that's the fo reality folks like it, it really shouldn't be that hard guys if we're able to change our behavior everyone should be able to have most dogs you know be able to just be pretty easy to take places pretty easy to leave alone pretty easy to include in our life or pretty easy to not include if we decide that it's not right to include them so remember as always folks we don't blame them we train them if we love them of course we lead them and uh you can always follow me online follow the leader canine.com but I hope you found this video helpful and, you know, until next time, we'll see you then, folks. Take care.